Hi guys, my name is Dr. Mazhar Ali and today I just saw a series of lecture on respiratory medicine. So today this is my first lecture on respiratory medicine. Before this I, I just talked about respiratory anatomy, physiology and now I start respiratory medicine. So that's why I start before this I start anatomy and physiology because if we don't if we not don't we don't have any concepts on anatomy and physiology so it's difficult or hard for you as for you to understand respiratory medicine so first of all so i hope you will understand this respiratory medicine very much so bef so first topic will be in respiratory medicine is a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease so this is the first first topic in respiratory medicine i just i would like to start so what is a copd so copd is a disease that is characterized by the presence of air flow obstruction secondary to chronic bronchitis or emphysema so usually air flow obstruction is progressive it means that they just severe day by day and it's not stopping so lungs function become impaired but it can be reversed if we use some bronchodilators some steroids we use so this condition can be reversible but not fully okay sometimes patient may present both the feature of chronic bronchitis as well as emphysema so this chronic bronchitis and emphysema collectively make a copd so maybe some patient can present both the clinical features of both condition and maybe some patient present just chronic bronchitis feature and other patient for example if you have two patients so maybe one patient can present to you with the clinical features of chronic bronchitis and other patient present to with the clinical features of emphysema so this is how the copd present a disease in the patient body so in the copd patient you can see in the picture this is a chronic bronchitis and this is an emphysema. These two diseases make COPD. So what is a chronic bronchitis? Chronic bronchitis is a simply defined as the inflammation of bronchi. Inflammation of bronchi, that inflammation lead to the excessive mucus formation as well as lead to the inflammation, inflammation going on in the wall of bronchi that lead to the obstruction of these bronchial walls. This is the normal healthy bronchi and this is the inflamed bronchi. So inflamed bronchi, this is the high this is the hypertrophy of mucus secreting goblet cell. Goblet cell present in the bronchi. So there is a hypertrophy as well as increase the number of in mucus secreting cell. So this is the main pathology of the chronic bronchitis. So how this when this inflammation going on? See, lumen become not obstructive, but in the inflammation when going on, lumen become obstructive. When lumen become obstructive, this is obstruction. So that's why we call chronic. That's why we call obstructive lung disease. In the other hand, if you see the emphysema, this is a healthy alveoli. This is the emphysema what happened in emphysema there is a destruction of elastic tissues outside the alveoli this is the alveoli and this is the boundary of alveoli so there is a destruction of elastic tissue that lead to the destruction of alveoli so alveolar membrane membrane break down so it lead to the emphysema so when there is a destruction, so it can also lead to the main destruction. So alveoli become enlarged, air tapping inside the alveoli, and there is no exit or entry proper of air. So it can lead to obstructive lung disease. Okay. Now I talk about the chronic bronchitis. What's the chronic bronchitis? So it is simply defined as the chronic bronch chronic productive cough that lasts for three consecutive months for at least minimum two years for at least two minimum years and three consecutive months productive cough so this is condition so this is how we define or how we diagnose this condition in patient if we ask the patient that when you feel when you suffer the cough in cough 
So patient replied that doctor, I just suffer with productive cough from the last three months, from last two years, everything from the last two years, but three consecutive months. Maybe patient asked you that I suffer with cough like in the March, April, May, and then next year again I suffer maybe in April, May, June. So three consecutive months, last two years. This can so this is how we diagnose the chronic bronchitis. This condition is highly associated with smoking. So smoking is the major risk factor for chronic bronchitis, for the development of chronic bronchitis. So maybe if someone asks you that what's the major risk factor for chronic bronchitis, you can simply answer that smoking. What's the pathology? What's the pathology going on? So to understand the pathology is very important. Okay. So pathology is that there is a hypertrophy of mucus secreting glands and increase in the number of goblet cells in the bronchi and bronchioles with decrease in ciliated cells. Therefore, increased mucus production and less efficient transport or clearance of mucus in the airway. So mucosal edema and permanent structural damage. That this ciliated cell become less. What is the function of this ciliated cell? Just to expel the mucus expel any harmful material like any toxin, any bacteria from the lungs to the outside environment. When ciliated cells become less, clearance of mucus become less. When clearance of mucus become less, so mucus accumulate in the bronchi and this is a good environment for bacterial infection. So that's, that is how the pathology is going. Now what's the emphysema? Emphysema already talked about in the diagram now. What's the definition? It's the destruction of alveolar ear sac due to the loss of elastic tissue that present around the alveoli. So during exhalation, lungs collapse because there is no elastic tissue that maintain alveolar proper shape. So obstruction and air trapping occur. So total lung capacity increase. But because the loss of alveoli lead to decrease gas decrease gas transfer gas exchange so when tlc increase but there is no proper exchange of gases occur between alveoli and so this so this is how physema affects the normal breathing and gas exchanges okay. so this is emphysema is also related with some like anti trypsin trypsin deficiency it lead to the development of emphysema smoking can lead to a destruction of elastic tissue so this is how emphysema develops see this is the normal this is the emphysematic this is the normal mean proper alveoli elastic tissue around but here there is a destroy alveoli affected by emphysema so this is how alveolar wall become infected and they become enlarged so this is very important to know now to know the compare to know the what's the difference between chronic bronchitis and emphysema is very important. So chronic bronchitis, bronchitis, I just shortly write bronchitis, it's a chronic bronchitis. Okay. Chronic bronchitis we also call blue blotters. Why? Because due to sinusis. That's why we call blue blotters. So what's the comparison? First of all, I talk about bronchitis. Bronchitis is the protective cough with chest infection because mucus accumulate it can lead to chest infection. It, it is present in 30 years of age and 40 years of age and patients usually overweight. Overweight maybe patient I already have some diabetes, already have diabetes mellitus, hypertension, ischemic heart disease or any vascular pathology. Sinosis is common and peripheral edema due to poor pulmonary. What is core pulmonary? Due to the obstruction, due to obstructive lung diseases lead to the vascular construction. When vascular construction happens, so it lead to the right ventricular hypertrophy. When right ventricular hypertrophy, this is we call what? Core pulmonary. And, and bronchi or wheeze common on auscultation. So this is how we diagnose and what is a pink puffer emphysema we call pink puffer so what's the what's the clinical features present in that condition there may be shortness of breath on exertion and present after age 50 
and patient usually thin and weight loss patient use accessory muscles of respiratory but no sinusitis which muscles sternocleidomastoid muscles intercostal muscles scalene muscles no wheeze breath sound reduced no wheeze you cannot see wheeze you cannot uh, on auscultation you will not found any wheeze and breath sound may be reduced so what's the clinical features of copd there is a cough it can be productive and chest tightness chest pain shortness of breath on line when shortness of breath on line we call orthopnea as well as shortness of breath on exertion on heavy exertion this is also typical feature for copd investigation we do chest x ray now I'll talk about x ray so x ray pav findings what you find on the x ray there is a low flat diaphragm low normally it's a dome shape but in the copd this is a low flat diaphragm and prominent pulmonary arterial shadow this is a pulmonary arterial shadow this is and hyperlucency what is the meaning of hyperlucency more blackish due to excessive air in the lungs clavicle proper trachea proper this is a heart shadow mediastinum okay so this is a ribs now pulmonary function test that uh, what secondly this first test x ray now talk about pulmonary function test in pulmonary function test we do first of all we do spirometry spirometry in which we ask the patient to take a deep breath and then force full expiration one minute so fev1 and our fevc normal is 80% if less than 80% for example if patient blow but it cannot blow fully in one second so it indicate pathology and peak expiratory flow meter that will be reduced so this we commonly use in pulmonology ward peak expiratory flow meter same here in respiratory but here we ask the patient to inspire the air and then to and then first of all inspire the air then expire in a forcefully so you just check on the meter what's the uh, normal it's breathing okay and we, we send symptom for css just to rule out streptococcus pneumoniae or influenza virus and to ecg to rule out core pulmonale the core pulmonale if there is a core pulmonale that is a tall p wave on ecg and we check echo do echo for checking heart condition what's the condition of heart what's the differential diagnosis the differential diagnosis of copd in the copd your differential diagnosis can be bronchial asthma bronchiectasis cystic fibrosis and mechanical obstruction of central air vein so if patient come to you with copd you can rule out this condition if this condition not present diagnosis will be cop now what's the management very important part of this lecture what's the pulp, uh, the first management will be just to quit the smoking because smoking is a risk factor for chronic bronchitis oxygen therapy like give oxygen to the patient bronchodilator like ipratropium that is what anticholinergic sympathomimetic like ventolin and oral th theophylline like theobrid the third line management so theophylline we just say for third line management because it is also very toxic toxic drug and oral steroid like data cortel and chest physiotherapy very important we do chest physiotherapy just to relax the just to exercise the respiratory muscle and diuretics if core pulmonary is present okay. this is the uh, how we provide oxygen to the patient this is the non invasive of oxygen mask just to maintain the saturation of oxygen this is how we use the oxygen mask in the patient and this is the nasal cannula in previous diagram and these both are non invasive this is a nasal cannula this is not a face mask this is a nasal cannula we provide oxygen to the patient and in the previous we use a face mask. so that's it guys that's it for today lecture so
this is about uh, COPD so in my next lecture I will talk about asthma so this is the first lecture of respiratory medicine now next lecture I will talk about asthma thank you guys I hope you understand very well so see you next time thank you have a good time